Hi there and welcome to this video. My name is Jeppe and this is a Q&A. I posted a story on Instagram last week to get questions from you guys, whatever you wanted to ask me, business related or personal. And in this video, I've chosen five questions which I want to go over and trying to get my take on. So let's get right into this video. The number one question I got was, what made me move to Dubai? This is a question I get asked like all the time. And I have four different answers for this. So there's four things that actually made me move to Dubai. The first thing is network. So where I come from in Denmark, it's a smaller city of around 50,000 people. And this just meant for me that I was kind of limited of how much business and knowledge that I could get from my network. So I decided to move to Dubai because I knew there is a lot of people that are doing business. And this is also what I have been experiencing from just living here for only two months. Even if I'm playing paddle tennis, if I'm going out for a run, if I'm a good example is buying a car, which I was two weeks ago. And just today, actually, the guy that I bought the car from, I closed as a client. So everyone has some kind of relation to business. And this just makes it really relevant to be a place like this because everyone you meet is your potential client. And that's a really nice and easy way to get new clients instead of chasing them like i touched on in my last video the second thing is the weather so i'm from denmark and obviously denmark is a country where especially from now on like from september to may the weather is horrible there's rain there's gray clouds everything and i don't like that and dubai is wonderful because the sun rises at the same time every day there's sunshine and that's just wonderful for me it gives me so much energy it just makes my days a lot brighter and i just love it so much the third thing is I needed new surroundings. And I think a lot of people, when they have run their business for one, two, three years, at a certain point, they feel like they hit a plateau. So they have a hard time actually getting anywhere from where they are. And my kind of solution to that, because I was in the same position was, okay, I feel like I can't get any further with my business from the current place I am. So I need to change my surroundings. So the buyer was a great choice to do that because as I just mentioned, there's all the networking benefits, the weather is wonderful. And then my fourth point about why I moved to Dubai is the tax reasons. So obviously in Dubai, when you have a free zone company as I do, you pay 0% tax. So of course that's a huge benefit. And I actually tried to do some calculations on that based upon how much money you need to make before it makes sense to move to Dubai. But I will make another video on that topic. That was the four reasons that made me move to Dubai. The second question I got was, which type of business am I running? I run a social media marketing agency. I've been doing this for the last two and a half, three years. And I've been working on it full time since last year in August. So this is something I've been doing for some time and don't want to go too much into detail, but we run ads on Facebook and Instagram, Google and email marketing for different clients in Denmark, Europe in general. We have two clients in the US and then we have clients here in Dubai. For this point, it's a business with me and then my performance marketer, Oliver and Jacob, which are wonderful to work with. So that is my current business. The third question I got was what separates me from other people and my agency from other people. I want to answer this question in two ways. In regards to agencies, other digital marketing agencies like myself, I don't feel like I am really different at all. I think what people kind of miss out on seeing is that the reason I'm more successful than them is usually just the amount of time I have been running the agency and the amount of time I've been working full time on the agency. I don't really believe that I've done anything special, that my business is doing a lot better than a lot of other people's businesses. What I think happens for a lot of people is that they look at, let's say my business, and then they think, ah, oh, I'm maybe doing like a fifth of the revenue that Yebe is doing. But what they forget is that they have probably only been running the agency for a fifth of the time that I've been running it. So of course they're not having the same results yet. So in the agency space, we are definitely nothing special. We do ads, we do our best with our clients. I have my two full-time employees, which are really, really intelligent people and they're really good at what they do, but that's just it. On the personal side, I want to say that I'm not really that much different. I think what I can feel really makes a difference in my day-to-day -day in regards to what I'm able to achieve is my three to four hours of deep work in the morning. And you've probably heard this many, many times from 
gurus, whatever course you're probably taking. But the three to four hours I get every morning in deep work is just crucial for me. Because that's where I get at least 80% of all my work through the day done. And this is why I chose this next question. What is my morning routine? This morning routine is what makes me able to actually work this three to four hours of deep work every single morning. I have two different morning routines. The first variant is I wake up at 6.30. I start my day always with reading. The reason I do that is because if I plan to read every night, then I'm probably tired or whatever, and then I don't get it done. If I plan to read throughout the day, then I have meetings, I have phone calls, I have emails to answer, and then I just don't get it done. So I've chosen and I've just figured out from trial and error, if I read the first thing in the morning, just sitting in the bed, pull out my book and start reading, then I get it done every day. The third thing I do is I take a walk. Where I live, there's an easy like around the marina where I live. It's like a 20 minute walk, so I usually do that whenever I choose this morning routine. Then I take a shower when I get home and then I just start work. This means that I would usually be starting work at around 7.30, which means I have at least two and a half hours to three hours before we have our morning meeting with the team and the day starts. The second morning routine I have is much similar to the other variant. The only difference is that instead of taking a walk, I go to the gym. Luckily, the building I live in, we have a gym on the highest floor. This means it's really easy for me, like from waking up in my bed until I'm at the gym, it's maybe three minutes. I just have to change and then go back home, shower, and then just work. The crucial thing here is just, I need to be able to start working from 7.30 at least until 10 a.m completely focused with no any disturbance because that's where I'm actually able to do 80% of the work in that specific day. And then I have one last thing to mention about the morning routine which I think is really crucial is I never check social media, messages, emails, anything before I start work at 7.30. Just completely focused on whatever I'm doing. If I start my day by reading the news, checking social media, checking emails, my brain instantly turns on and I'll be stressed for the entire day and I'll be having a lot of struggle actually focusing on the tasks I have to do. So that's really an important keynote to take from this point. The fifth and final question I've chosen to go on this video is my thoughts on the current education system. So I'm from Denmark, so of course my standpoint is the current education system in Denmark, because that's where I have my experience. I really don't want to have an edgy take on the education system. I don't want to say it's shit and horrible because I don't think it is. But what I think the current problem with the education system that we have is that it's really median focused. So we are really focused and we have developed an education system that focuses on the average. So instead of having an education that's focused on talent development or focused on the people that are really having a hard time in school, we instead have just made an entire education plan based upon the knowledge level of the average. And this is pretty simple. So the input is average knowledge and the output is of course average students. And I think this is our biggest problem in Denmark and I think we could see this if we take a look at maybe the Chinese education system. They're really, really good at talent developing. We come out and we have a lot of Chinese young students that are actually able to challenge especially Danish students because they have been talent developed since they were maybe six or seven years because they were a little bit brighter than the other students. I think that's one of the crucial things. And the last thing I want to touch on on the education system is that I actually myself did my third year in high school as complete self-study. So this means I didn't attend any classes, I didn't have to put any of the assignments that my fellow classmates had to make, none of that. I did everything on my own, I didn't even really study for my exams and instead of having three exams to finish high school, then I had 12. And I finished with an above average grade in general. So my average grade was actually still above the average. And yeah, you could say, yeah, but I'm brighter than a lot of people or I have a lot more knowledge. But what I actually think it comes down to is that I have the ability to speak and communicate really well. And I think nine out of 12 of my exams were verbal. So I had to sit down and explain and talk and speak. I think I got the most of my good grades for the exams purely based upon my ability to speak and communicate well. So my point for you is that you learn a lot in school, yeah, but I think it's a lot more important you learn skills that you don't learn in school. 
For example, communication. Learn how to speak, learn how to convince people through words. That's a lot more important than learning, okay, this guy in 1950, he did this and this and this, because you will never use that in your real life. And I think that's why I was successful with my exams, is because when I attended the 12 exams at summer, I've been working full-time on my business since the summer before. So I had a lot of real life knowledge. I had a lot of experience from real life and you'll never get this just from attending school. So I think that's what's wrong with the current education system, at least in Denmark. So this was the Q&A for me. I hope these five questions touched upon some interesting subjects. At least I think it did. Please, again, leave me feedback in the comments or leave a like if you like the video. As I mentioned last and my first video is that I will be posting two videos a week. So I hope you want to subscribe and follow along. Otherwise, just have an amazing day. Goodbye.